All right. Good morning. Uh, thank you for coming. I know it's a little bit early, but um, you can think of uh, little kids going to school even at an earlier hour, so that can be a relief if you want to find excuse for your being here this hour. Well, um, as I said in the previous session on Tuesday, we will be meeting for several weeks uh, for four hours a week, two plus two on Tuesdays and Fridays. So in order to be able to make up for the possible loss of classes because of my participation in some of the conferences, uh, one that will be taking place in Cairo, specifically on Middle East security issues, and that will be followed by another meeting in London right after Cairo. And uh, I will be participating in an important um, program, uh, so to speak, in Israel for about a week, uh, where I will most possibly be meeting with statesmen, politicians, community leaders, and this is a special program arranged for a number of uh, experts on Middle East issues. So um, we will be missing several hours, and therefore in order to make up for this uh, losses that will be taking place toward the end of the semester, now we are going to meet for four hours. So sorry for any inconvenience this may cause you, but in my absence, you can take your time to read some other stuff, and um, maybe if uh, you are sort of uh, waking up early on Fridays these weeks, you may not have to do so. Um, uh, last week, I distributed a syllabus. Is there anybody here right now who was not in the class on Tuesday and who is now here? and therefore would like to have a syllabus. Well, you can get copies after the class if you like, or uh, I can pass a couple of copies for those who are not here. Please take one. And we had a brief introduction. Uh, by the way, um, which one of these? Is this okay? This screen should come. Well, um, I'm not going to go into the uh, substance today, and at least at least for this first hour, because I want to make sure all of you got it right, what I expect from you in terms of all paid writing and also the simulation sessions that will be held at the end of the semester. All paid is one of your assignments, and uh, simulation will be, again, will uh, constitute part of your grade, approximately one-fourth of your grade will come from your participation and performance during the simulation in terms of teams, and you'll be making up teams like uh, Iraq, Iran, Syria, uh, and US, Russia, EU, etc. So countries that will be taking part in this simulation. And also OPED uh, will be making approximately one-fourth of your grade, overall grade, together with your participation. Uh, of course, midterm exam and final exam. Plus, there is this 5.5% uh, additional bonus if you are willing to review the chapter by Fazal Sai in his book, uh, Learning uh, with Music. Um, well, I wonder if uh, any one of you, just for some reason, had the curiosity to get to know what exactly OPED is. Did, did you? Google what op-ed means. Where does this op-ed thing come from? Anybody? Well, this is uh, something a little bit debated. And then there is this uh, debate. Um, some people don't even accept it. There's a debate and they say, no, op-ed doesn't mean opinion editorial. And it, uh, this abbreviation comes from, according to their explanation, actually something interesting, opposite editorial. Opposite editorial means the page opposite uh, to the page where there are editorials in newspapers. Well, editorial is something, actually these are uh, piece, opinion pieces, of course, which reflect the opinion of one or more people who work in, uh, in this particular, in any, any uh, newspaper which could be written by one or more people, and they do not necessarily carry any name at the end. I mean, it is kind of anonymous, 
uh, uh, therefore uh, the author is not known for sure and these kind of editorials are written at times of uh, important developments. There might be some sort of a economic crisis or political debate whereby the uh, newspaper columnists or the uh, authors uh, in the newspaper may uh, individually or an in group may wish to express a certain opinion in order to have an impact on the public opinion. I mean, we have seen such uh, editorials in, in many newspapers abroad and in Turkey. But uh, op-eds carry a name, uh, and you know who is the author unless this, it's a fake name. And in, in most cases, uh, newspapers do not allow people to use fake names, and they want their real names uh, to be used and to be put uh, at the end of the uh, article as a signature. So uh, the, the explanation as to where this op-ed abbreviation, the shorthand notation of this, comes from, uh, you know, goes back to several uh, decades and, and, and when people really um, wanted to know as to where this does come from. And uh, they made a search and they figured out that at some point in the 1920s, uh, someone who first of all um, leaves some space or left some space for this kind of uh, opinion pieces uh, in his uh, newspaper as the ed editor of the paper. And therefore, uh, that person says, well, when I wanted uh, several people or certain people to have their opinions, I left the page opposite the editorial page of the newspaper for this kind of uh, pieces, articles or short opinion pieces. And of course the other sort of uh, explanation is as you uh, used opinion editorial. Well both make sense. What matters to us actually is not where this comes from but <laughs> what makes sense for us is that you should understand what exactly an op-ed is and you should of course uh, toward the end of the semester you should be able to write one because as I said this will constitute more or less uh, one-fourth of your uh, overall grade and this is something important. Yes please. Well um, actually what I would like you to do is at the beginning, I mean, when you decide on a subject, on a topic, I would like you to consult with me because I want uh, all pet subjects, all pet topics that you will be writing uh, be compatible with the purpose of this course. I mean, we should write, I mean, you should be writing something which falls within the confines, within the sort of uh, boundaries of this course, Middle East security. So uh, I'm sure you will all understand as to what Middle East, Middle East security uh, means and you will not come up with topics that will be irrelevant. But this is the first step that I would like you to suggest. And um, in order to decide on the subject, of course, you should uh, not only have a certain degree of interest, but of, of course, after some time throughout the uh, semester as we go, you should be able to accumulate some knowledge because op-eds cannot be written without any knowledge. And, and as I said, and I will explain again in detail, op-eds are different than term papers, require a different uh, type of research as well as writing skills, and therefore this is important. But and in due course, if you believe at some certain point you would like to consult with me as to how you proceed, I mean, what, it, what you uh, write down sort of uh, fulfills the requirements of an op-ed, you're always welcome. I mean, during my office hours, and also, you can just uh, drop an email. Uh, you can attach the draft op-ed that you have uh, done already. Uh, and I can just have a look at it and say, well, um, that would be better if you did this and that. Or maybe if you have already done a good job, then I, I can congratulate you. So this is important. Um, op-ed writing uh, is something, uh, in some sense, pretty simple but for those who know a certain subject very well because it requires people to express their opinion in a, uh, in a rather relatively um, less number of words. The ideal uh, sort of uh, uh, number of words would be as I try to s explain last time is 
somewhere in between 700 to a um, thousand words. Well, something a little less, more than this, or a little, a little less than that, is still okay. But as you go uh, to the far right end of this spectrum, let's say, that means you have difficulty in explaining yourselves uh, in, um, in, in rather short uh, sort of space. This is important because one thing that is essential in op-ed is that you have an opinion, you have, uh, you have a view, you have a certain argument, and you express it in such a way to make it uh, uh, sort of a, or um, in, in some sense you express your opinion by way of uh, arguing something. You, you have, you, you endorse something. You are, of course, debating something. You are either against or for something. You may be criticizing something, you may be promoting something. But yet, what is important is that you have a clear idea. You write something to the point. It is not where you can elaborate at length extensively some subject by way of introducing a certain dimension to it and then taking up another part. Well, this is, this is something that you can do and you have time and space uh, uh, for research papers, term papers. This is something else. But in um, op-eds, you have a quick opinion, short, precise, and you deliver this to the other side, to the reader, in, in a very concise manner, right? You go to the heart of the matter and you explain uh, your opinion. And in order to capture the uh, minds of the people, I mean, especially if you are writing an op-ed in a newspaper, you want it to be read by uh, as many people as uh, possible, and therefore you should attract the attention of the reader at first. You should introduce the subject as to what you exactly are going to talk about and what you are arguing in this piece uh, at the very beginning. And of course, you express your opinion. It is something that uh, allows you to somehow um, uh, defend something. This is, this is necessary. It's not just uh, wavering between uh, two ends uh, of, of, of an idea and whether this is the right thing or whether this is wrong. No. You say, well, here, in this case, here is my point, and here are the reasons why, and if necessary, and it is uh, necessary in most cases, here are my sort of solution, uh, or you know, uh, other sort of propositions as to how to overcome if there's any difficulty, for instance, a political um, trouble, problem, economic crisis situation, etc. you present your idea as well as uh, a solution. So this is important. Uh, what, what matters here is that you express your views in as uh, uh, sort of a, a few number of words as possible. This is uh, necessary. Of course, there is not one specific uh, guideline to follow for op-eds. I mean, depending on different schools of thought, op-eds might be uh, written in uh, different ways. I mean, but of course, uh, having uh, some common denominators, some commonalities. But on the other hand, uh, there are also some uh, uh, fundamental principles that you should, need, uh, you should follow. And of course, um, as students, you may find it difficult, uh, and uh, this assignment might be somewhat a difficult assignment for you uh, when compared to term papers. I don't know which one is more difficult. Uh, or which, because I'm not going to assign term papers, and you can compare and contrast uh, if other professors assign uh, term papers this semester as to which one would be more difficult. But this is something not at all easy for even professors like us. I mean, um, even if we teach the subject, you know, even if we are supposed to be uh, experts on a particular issue, when it comes to writing an op-ed, uh, I can tell you that this is not a very easy thing either. And I was just um, trying to figure out if there was anything that I could suggest uh, for you to follow. Um, I just, I mean, you can find, it, find this uh, yourself as well. Um, let me just uh, try to find this again here. Oops. That might be, no, this is... Uh, 
I, I'm trying to figure uh, here an email which I sent to myself. Yes, uh, no, <laughs> not yet again. I'm going to show these pictures uh, in a moment. Anyway, um, sorry. Here we go. <clears throat> Tips for op ed writing. Uh, this link, look, uh, this is an interesting link. Uh, Duke University is one of the world's best universities, as you probably know. And uh, I was just looking for whether there was any specific sort of uh, guideline for op ed writers. And Duke University, uh, for their own faculty members, they prepare uh, a kind of program or just a package. And uh, they also, of course, want uh, their um, uh, faculty members to be in consultation with the communications office. You don't have to take note because I will send this uh, uh, via email. And as you can go and see here, for instance, there are certain uh, specific There are certain specific uh, suggestions here, such as, well, this is uh, something that doesn't apply to you because uh, you're not going to wait for something to break out and take advantage of this in order to be able to promote something that you want to publish. Well, because th this, this uh, suggestion actually for the faculty members is to, when is the best time to write to newspapers in order to have uh, higher chances for whatever uh, op-ed they may write to, to be published. But starting from here, first of all, the uh, Duke University people even make pretty much the same suggestions. I mean, limit yourself to 750 words. Well, of course, uh, op-eds are not only published in daily papers. Well, maybe the origin uh, might be coming from uh, newspaper uh, publications. But now there are specific websites which uh, sort of uh, uh, solicit, I mean, ask from authors, experts, scholars, and other people to write op-eds. And as I will show you in a moment, and there are examples of op-eds that are not necessarily newspaper articles, newspaper pieces, but uh, they are published on websites. And in this respect, they may be a little bit longer because our readers, uh, in a sense, are ready to uh, sort of read anything that is uh, um, supplied there. But in daily papers, the, uh, maybe the reason behind as to why op-eds are sort of uh, suggested to be limited uh, maybe up to seven, 750 words is because in, uh, readers of daily papers may not be willing to read longer, uh, uh, read longer uh, articles. So, Therefore, this is a suggestion, again, that maybe you should not bother yourself. And, of course, at your level, we can tol tolerate uh, a little bit more uh, number of words, like 1,000 or 1,200. Well, uh, this past summer school, I uh, asked from my students to write op-eds. Well, of course, um, because op-eds require a certain uh, time for getting uh, yourself familiarized with a subject, reading, accumulating knowledge, and then digesting that knowledge, and then you become uh, capable of writing this thing, then of course the summer uh, school period was not uh, perfectly uh, suitable for op-ed writing, and therefore I did not set my expectation pretty high. So I lowered my expectation, but some of my students, I would say I, had, I guess uh, 29 or 30 students during the summer school, some 25 of them, were uh, uh, willing to write an op-ed, and I would say one third of them were quite good. I mean, they could be published anywhere uh, because uh, they had followed my instructions and, and sort of uh, made a, a concise research. But again, as I said, in, in your case, I can tolerate a little bit more number of words, like 1,000 or 1,200. 
uh, provided that you are not sort of uh, uh, walking around on the subject but go to the heart of the matter. This is important. Uh, this is something that I uh, kept saying my students during last summer and also uh, on Tuesday as you will remember. You should make a single point. I mean an op-ed is not a piece where you can discuss or debate more than a num uh, you know, two or three uh, issues. And it is better if you could just confine yourself to one particular issue and promote one single thing and or discuss one, one issue uh, properly. What is important here, as I will show some examples from my own op-eds, um, again, you are centering uh, your piece, you're, you're writing around a certain specific point. Here, this is again more or less for um, newspaper uh, op-eds. And if you follow the same principle, it's good even for our op-eds here. But it is not that sort of indispensable. And put your main point on top. I mean, because newspaper readers, I mean, people when they just pick up newspaper in the morning or whenever they just uh, have a chance to read, and when they just look at the uh, newspaper articles, items, etc., they should be attracted to your piece. The title is one way of making it attract attractive, and also the first couple of sentences, again, uh, they are very important in order for the reader to follow suit, I mean, to go on reading it. So unless you make yourself clear as to what you're going to talk about, in the paper, and if the reader is confused or doesn't get the point, he or she may very well drop your article, and then your sort of op-ed might not be read by as many people as you would like uh, to uh, be read. Um, again, uh, this is something that is in connection with uh, the previous point as to why people should read. When, for instance, uh, my students who are writing MA, I mean master thesis, a PhD dissertations. Uh, the introduction is very, very important because, I mean, you should tell me as to why I should sit and read your 300 pages as a PhD doctoral, I mean, doctoral dissertation or 100 pages of a master thesis. So the introductory part is, in any writing, in any piece of uh, written material, is uh, extremely important. You should definitely make the reader uh, sort of aware of what he or she is going to read. So um, this is, again, important. Then, as I mentioned at the beginning, this is not a piece of uh, 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 written material where you can just debate certain things without making specific uh, recommendations. It is necessary that you make a recommendation here. Unless you do so, the purpose of op-ed will not be fulfilled. This is important. Well, again, there are some tips for uh, making the op-ed uh, more uh, attractive, such as using short sentences. This is always uh, important uh, in any type of writing, unless you write a novel or a, you know, a play script, whatever. Depending on the uh, style, uh, things uh, may differ. What is important here is, in my opinion, this point here. I mean. This is something that, that is suggested to the uh, faculty members by the university administration as to how to you know, write an op-ed. But f to me, an, an op-ed is not an op-ed without carrying your personal uh, view, personal opinion. And that's why people might sort of uh, say it's opinion editorial instead of opposite editorial, which is possibly the true origin of this op-ed abbreviation anyway. But what is essential here is that you have an opinion. You defend a view. You have to defend a certain view. You should not just leave things in limbo. I mean, you should not say, OK, this is right. This is also right. So here is the middle ground. No, you are defending something, again, uh, from examples that I will show you, at least from my own, uh, you can uh, sort of uh, see how it should be. Well, again, this is something that is applicable for uh, people like uh, us, I mean, faculty members, avoid jar jargon. 
jargon is something, uh, is a shorthand notation for certain things that may be understood only by those people who may be knowledgeable about the subject and others may not at all understand and sometimes they may create uh, confusion. So therefore, for simple uh, readers, I mean those who do not know the subject, it is recommended that uh, the op-ed should avoid jargon, but again, this is for newspaper uh, articles and newspaper op-eds and other uh, stuff. So uh, I will send this email, this link, for your uh, perusal. I mean, just, and you can also make your own personal uh, research. Uh, let me, let me f sort of uh, here, let me show you something. You may be worrying as to what I'm writing here, a bit of lemons. Why is that? Oops, sorry. Well, this is, this is a website uh, which is read by millions of people around the world every year. Uh, they have more than 100,000 uh, subscribers. And, um, well, bitterlemonsinternational.org. It is, as far as I know, it is a website maintained by an Israeli and a Palestinian uh, intellectual. Uh, and the main idea is to promote Arab-Israeli peace. And um, they invite people to contribute with their op-eds, with their short opinion pieces, which I would qualify as op-ed. And, and every time, I mean, depends on uh, the frequency of uh, events or the sort of uh, necessity, they invite people. Uh, the last one was published pretty much a month ago. And since then, this sort of uh, set of uh, op-eds st stay there. Sometimes they stay at least a week. And sometimes they may be staying as long as a month, as you can see here. Well, for uh, those interested, you can go here, search by author, and if you write a name familiar to you, which is my name, well, I must have written quite a bit. Um, well, this is, excuse me, there are some. They do not belong to me. Uh, some, yeah. Okay, let's drop Mustafa part uh, and just search with Kibaro. I don't think there's another Kibaro in the Middle East who write <laughs> on the security issues, at least for the time being. All right, here is. Uh, well, this one, for instance, I mean, where you sort of. Uh, promote a specific idea, you defend it, it is an assertion, it is an argument, and you of course substantiate with certain, if possible, facts, figures, and also with some substantiating argument. Well, uh, let me just give you some preliminary information before we discuss this particular one. And whenever you want to sort of uh, read these and others, you can go to the bitterlemonsinternational.org website and read as many op as as possible. And, and of course, this is not only something that will help you figure out as to what you should be writing about, but also how to write things. And additionally, you will have learned many things about uh, the Middle East as part of this uh, course, because this is a website which I pre follow uh, pretty closely. And so far, I have not seen anything published there which did not appeal to me or which I found unnecessary. I mean, all of them are quite relevant pieces. And those who maintain the website ask from people. You do not send pieces there. They ask from you to contribute if you are willing to do so. And in most cases, um, they send this request one or two days before the deadline. And so you are kind of under the pressure of time where you have to express your opinion in a very short sort of a space and concise manner. 
Well, um, for those who may not have followed Biden as to what was going on after the inauguration of uh, uh, U.S. President Barack Obama, and prior to that, actually, when most people were almost certain that Barack Obama would win the race, the presidential race in the United States, and from his close entourage, uh, from people from his, uh, among his advisors, uh, there was some information leaking to the press that if and when Obama uh, won the race uh, and became uh, the U.S. president, in a very short time after his uh, inauguration, he would pay a visit to a country in the Islamic world, and he would appeal to the Islamic world. Um, and people were sort of, uh, even had started to bet as to which country that would be. Uh, people, some people suggested it would be Malaysia, some others said Indonesia, some others suggested Egypt. And when he decided to come to Turkey, only after some 70 or so days, 70 plus days after his inauguration, which in my opinion was an unprecedented event. I mean, no American president so far had paid a visit to Turkey after some two months following his inaugur inauguration. Well, of course Turkey is a very important country and its importance has heightened over the last several years because of the developments in this part of the world, in the world, especially in the aftermath of 9-11 uh, and the Iraq war. So these uh, developments have elevated Turkey's profile to a very uh, high level. But yet again, it is customary for the U.S. presidents to pay their first visit, which he did actually, as, if I'm not mistaken, to Canada. Well, this is kind of tradition in the U.S. politics foreign policy implementation. They have a special relationship. And also pretty much to countries like United Kingdom and Israel, which are known as United States strategic partners. The, the term strategic partners truly applies to this kind of relationship. I mean, the one between United States and Israel and also uh, United States and United Kingdom. But Turkey has not been on the list of countries, at least so far, which would be visited in the at least first couple of years of the U.S. presidents uh, uh, after becoming president. But this time, after some seven or five or so days uh, following his inauguration, he paid a visit to, to Turkey. And I said, and as I also argued in this uh, short piece, that was the visit that was mentioned before by his advisors and, and something information that leaked to the press from his entourage um, that, you know, uh, where he would uh, appeal to the Islamic world. Well, of course, we are very sensitive. I mean, Turks are very sensitive uh, uh, with respect to not being categorized as an Islamic country. Yes, uh, an overwhelming majority of our population is uh, Muslim. This is correct. Uh, uh, we believe in Islam uh, by way of faith, but on the other hand, Turkey politicians, intellectuals, men in the street, uh, and uh, many people at least display the sensitivity as to not to be categorized. But, but of course, there are people who like to see Turkey categorized as such. Well, after all, this is something that is open to everyone's own uh, assessment. But anyway, uh, what? There, I said, that was the um, visit, or that would be the uh, sort of occasion for the U.S. president to appeal to the Islamic world. And he came to Turkey for this very specific purpose because he wanted the, the Islamic world, countries in the Islamic sort of uh, realm, in, in, in the Islamic part of the world, uh, to adopt certain principles that are embedded in Turkish uh, republics, sort of a uh, way of life, so to speak. And in this article, as you can go ahead and read if you are interested, I discuss uh, here in a rather uh, few sentences, I don't know how many words, but it was approximately a thousand words or so. And as you can see here, I say, Here, um, explain the reasons why he did this, uh, paid this visit, 
at this uh, early stage of his presidential sort of uh, um, job here. So there are also a couple of other examples that I can show you. For instance, um, let's take this one. These are also available on my personal website. I don't know if anyone so far had a chance to visit my website. I don't charge anybody. It's for free and it is specifically designed for you. Uh, let me just go from here and familiarize yourself. Well, this me, <laughs> of course not. This is something that comes with the web website. I, I didn't have any choice. Well, uh, this is my office. For those who have not visited already, uh, you're welcome. The door, the door is open. Here are the articles uh, that might be of interest to you. And these are um, some of them are chapters, some of them are articles, and etc. Here, some of my op-eds are uploaded to my website and for, for, uh, for you to read. Um, for instance, after this uh, incident, tragic incident in the Eastern Mediterranean, um, the Israeli uh, military's attack on Mavi Marmara ship, you know what happened. And the, actually, in my opinion, the Turkish-Israeli relations have hit the bottom. And as a, as a scholar who pays attention to the well-being of this relationship, not only between Turkey and Israel, but of course between Turkey and its, uh, all of its neighbors and as many countries as possible, I make some recommendations as to how to sort of uh, re resuscitate or revitalize these relationships. This is important. And the question actually, OPETS uh, uh, requests uh, Omar, the person's name, Omar Karmi is sending emails. Omar sends me a, a very short topic, says, sir, would you be willing to write on this particular issue? Deadline is uh, Wednesday afternoon, and he writes this email, most possibly on Monday afternoon or Tuesday morning. So you have only a few hours to think about it and just sit and write. Well, again, this is some that increase your adrenal level and then maybe you're, you're writing a better uh, piece. Uh, maybe this is the tactic that I follow. But the, the uh, subject here was whether uh, Turkish-Israeli relations could be saved from the point where they were at the moment. And that was right after, and if you just look at uh, here, June 10th, uh, this is only 10 days after the incident. Uh, 31st of May, and then, so, and that was when the Turkish, as well as, of course, and more specifically, Israeli uh, politicians from the highest levels were making such bitter statements that would not really leave any room for even uh, thinking of any possibility to uh, re sort of uh, recover from the level where the Turkish-Israeli relations had hit as I said, the bottom here. And again, there is uh, a certain argument here um, which I sort of base my uh, sort of arguments on certain specific issues and make some recommendations. So here are some uh, examples as I mentioned here. And by the way, please familiarize yourselves with this uh, website. And, and I'm not, as I said, promoting uh, for any reason because it is something that might be essential, and some of your readings, uh, which belong to me, will, will be available on this website, so you don't have to go to the uh, library and check the reserve uh, or make photocopies. These are already available here. So, um, I hope this point is uh, well understood because OPED, as I said, will be constituting one significant proportion of your overall grade. I wonder if you have any questions so far. If there's anything that I may have missed or not clear or something that requires further uh, explanation. Any points, any comments? Or are you satisfied with all these explanations? Uh, or do you feel like 
ready to at least think about writing an op-ed because in the next hour after this break, like 10 minutes, I'll be talking about simulation, which is another requirement. Well, and I want to talk about all this before going in, into the heart of the matter, which will be uh, starting with this, uh, most possible on Tuesday next week. I want you all know about the requirements of this course because this is not a must course. This is an elective course. You have uh, become my students voluntarily. Nobody forced you to do so. But since you have uh, taken the decision, um, you should be uh, ready to follow the uh, instructions in terms of how to be successful, how to get good grades. And by the time of uh, the end of the day, 27th, I guess, Monday, uh, this, uh, the, the end of the uh, ad drop days, you should be able to know what is awaiting you in the future throughout the semester. All right? So let's give a break and come back in like 10 minutes.